Hello and onigaishimasu. I'm the Goju Ryu philosopher, and this is my review of the Seishin International Gi by Jesse M. Camp. I've been a fan of Jesse's for a while, and I've been following his videos, and I just recently got this as a Christmas gift. So let's try it on. Very good. Alright, so first impressions. First off, this ski feels incredibly lightweight, but it still has that snap and that movement feel that you would get from a heavyweight gi. It's a lot more freeing and a lot less restricting, while at the same time maintaining that feel of training in a proper gi, which is an amazing benefit. Additionally, the ventilation, both in the arms um, and in the other joints, and also the gussets, make this an incredibly freeing gi to move around in. It's a lot less restricting than some other gis of the same size that I've noticed. Additionally, the fact that the pants have four loops for the drawstring is a wonderful addition. Um, the traditional two-loop construction sometimes feels a little loose and sometimes feels like the drawstring is likely to fall out, but it feels completely secure with these four loops on the drawstring. And finally, the most important part, it looks good and it feels good. The fit is a little bit disconcerting, I have to admit. It's a little bit different than what I'm used to, especially with the high waist. But on the whole, uh, it's a fit that is comfortable and it's a fit that I can definitely get used to. Now, of course, I can't just give a full glowing recommendation. I have to list what the cons are. One of the cons that I noticed both in watching other people's reviews and while I was reviewing this for myself before trying this on, was that at some points the stitching is not 100% clean. There are a couple of runs on the hemmings, especially on the arms and on the legs of the pants. Um, overall, this isn't such a big problem, but it isn't 100% cleanly done. Also, I've got to say, the price is fairly high for what you get. It's definitely still a reasonable price. If you're just a beginner starting out, you should probably go with a more simple, with a less uh, expensive gi until you understand what you need for your own personal training. Although overall, I would say that it is a fairly good deal once you've moved on past that stage of your training. And finally, I mentioned this before, but the fit is a little bit odd, so you might not be used to training in a gi like this if you've trained in different gis before, like Takedo or Shiredo. The fit is very slightly different. However, overall, I have to say, this is a wonderful gi. I highly recommend it. But, all right. This video is more than just a review of the Seishin Gi. I mean, it's a wonderful Gi, all things considered, but why would you even need to train in a Gi if you could just train in your street clothes? So I call myself a Koji Ryu philosopher, so I have to look into a little bit more what are the reasons to train in a Gi. First, let's consider some history. Back when karate was trained purely as a self-defense art in Okinawa, most martial artists didn't train in a Gi. They trained in their street clothes at the time. Karateka only really began wearing the gi when the art was introduced to mainland Japan, adopting it as part of a push to make karate more Japanese. The gi, as well as the colored obi ranks that we know today, were inspired by the Japanese martial art of judo. However, nowadays, the judo gi tends to be heavier than a karate gi, since judoka are more focused on grabbing and throwing, whereas karateka have a lot more punching and kicking techniques that require more freedom of movement. As karate became popular in Japan, and then spread to the rest of the world, this image of a karateka in a gi became part of the culture of karate, and several different styles of gi were developed. Nowadays, there are certain styles of gi that are marketed for kata demonstration, for training, for sparring, for grappling, and for anything in between. Because of karate's popularity, the image of a karateka in a gi has become part of the world's image of karate, for better or for worse. When looking at why karateka still train in a gi, I'm going to divide my reasons into two categories because I feel like it. The first is going to be symbolic reasons, and the second is going to be practical reasons. So I'm going to start off by taking a look at the symbolic significance of the gi. Traditionally, many gi are white. Besides being practical, since the gi don't have to be colored, this also serves to symbolize either emptiness or death, two things that are very important in the martial arts. However, there are also a lot of gi that are colored differently. Some martial arts, such as Matayoshi Kobudo, have the practice of wearing white shitagi, the pants, but the jacket, or uagi, is black. Other colors include red, blue, and anything in between. 
Personally though, I like the simplicity of the light color for both the jacket and the pants. However, more important than a specific color is the fact that all of the dojo trains in the same color of gi. The gi is supposed to act as a uniform to make everyone in the dojo feel connected as part of their training. Having the ability to take off the stress and the anxiety of the world at the dojo door when you take off your street clothes and to just train can be a real benefit both to the quality of the training that a martial artist can do and to the life of the karateka in general. However, one of the most undeniable aspects of training in a gi is the This can be a positive thing, like I just mentioned. If you look the part and feel the part of a karateka, it helps you train to the best of your ability. However, it can contribute to turning training into a consumer identity, which I'll talk about more in depth in another video. Now it's time to move on to the practical element of training in the gi, and the best place to start is by comparing it to training in street clothes. The gi is much sturdier and much more grabbable than t-shirts or other street clothes, which can help if you need to train with grabs, holds, and throws without ripping the clothes that you came in. Additionally, since rolling always brings the risk of getting dirt or blood on your clothes, many karateka would rather dirty their gi and then clean it regularly than have to dirty their street clothes and get them sweaty, bloody, or just generally messy. Another benefit is due to the drawstring construction of most gis, you can make them looser and less restrictive. This can help if you need to practice your high kicks or other techniques, and it also contributes to lowering the possibility that you'll tear them while you're training. Finally, the most iconic element of training with a gi is the snap. The stiff fabric responds to sharp punches and kicks and can help you know that you're performing your technique well and strong. Personally, I sometimes train without my gi top, and when I do, I notice that my punches are less strong and they're less well executed. And also, let's be real, the snap sounds good, and that matters. So, overall, I think that you should wear a gi while you train. The gi can be a huge psychological advantage in your training, both by making every student uniform, connecting with the same history and the tradition of karate, and by encouraging a devotion and a dedication to practice. Additionally, your gi is much more sturdy than street clothes or other training clothes, and can provide feedback and techniques in a way that a t-shirt really can't. Besides, karateka wearing the gi undeniably looks really cool. But of course, I have to look at both sides. So now I'm going to cover the cons of wearing a gi while you train. The biggest con is, like with so many things, the price. Buying a gi can be expensive, and maintaining it can be really hard and time-consuming. Also, there are certain karateka and other people who will substitute the quality of the materials that they train with for the quality of their actual training. Being a karateka can be a valuable part of your personal identity. In fact, it's a huge part of my identity. However, you have to make sure that it doesn't become a purely consumer identity. You can't buy Buddha. You can only train it. Another downside is, you're probably not going to be wearing a gi if you get put in a real-life self-defense situation, and it's almost certain that even if you are, your attacker won't be. If you only know how to grab and throw someone who's also wearing a gi, then you might have a hard time if your opponent happens to be wearing a t-shirt, or a jacket, or really any other type of clothing. Make sure that while you're training, you understand not only how to grab the gi, but also how to apply those techniques to people who are not wearing it. The final downside I want to cover is that while training in the gi is authentic to the practice of karate in Japan, it's not 100% authentic to the origins in Okinawa. Personally, I don't think that following tradition is always 100% necessary or important, but I can't deny that to a lot of people, tradition has huge significance, which is perfectly valid. Connecting your training with the history of your style can be a huge benefit in motivating you to train hard and get better. With all that said, though, what do you think? Should Karateka wear the gi? Is tradition and aesthetic important, or should we focus on practicality? Leave your friendly comments down below, and be sure to check the doobly-doo for links that I used while coming up with the idea and the script for this video. Also, since this is hopefully the first of many videos on karate and philosophy, it would mean a lot if you could like this video and hit subscribe to this channel to be updated when more content comes out. Train hard, and arigato gozaimashita!